Hi, my name's Craig. I've just talked to Santa this morning and he's asked me to introduce this helicopter to all of you folks that might be getting something for Christmas, especially you young kids. He wants me to explain how you use this. I would recommend that you read the manual. However, it might be a little bit hard to understand because Santa's helpers in China do not do a great job of translating this manual into English. If and when you do need uh, parts for this helicopter, uh, you can order them online. Uh, you just put, you can go to Google and put in the search box. Uh, you can just put the search bo in the search box the number of the part that you need. Well, if you move the, the stick to the right, it will make the helicopter turn right and the same. If you move it to the left, the helicopter will pivot to the left. If you move this right stick forward or up, the helicopter will then go forward. If you move it down or back towards you, the helicopter will fly in reverse. When you fly the helicopter, you'll pretty much be um, using the left stick to maintain altitude because the helicopter will want to either climb or descend pretty much uh, constantly. It has a knob down here that rotates to the right or left. This is called the trim knob. It has an L for left and an R for right with some arrows indicating which direction uh, you need to turn it. Uh, I would recommend that you keep it in the slow mode for indoor flight. If you're, when you fly outdoors, and this capa uh, helicopter is capable of flying outdoor because it transmits a radio frequency versus an infrared light beam, uh, it can be used outdoors. Some of the less expensive helicopters transmit the signal to from the transmitter of the helicopter by infrared light and that it makes them awful hard to fly outside. Uh, it's only recommended that you fly those indoor. This will fly out or in, but only outdoor in dead calm air and in the fast mode. And when you do that, you'll pretty much be having the right stick all the way forward. The right stick controls the tail rotor blade, which makes the helicopter go forward or backward. That's what the right stick controls. The tail rotor blade for speed as far as forward or backward goes. And whether the helicopter turns right or left. The left stick, once again, if you move it forward, controls the speed of the main rotor blades and the helicopter will rise or fall. And remember, uh, boys and girls and guys and gals, that this helicopter uh, does not have propellers. It has rotor blades. These are rotor blades, main rotor blades, and this is a tail rotor blade. Um, the helicopter average flight of this helicopter will be between seven and eight minutes depending on how much throttle you're going to use for the main blades and the tail rotor blade. Seven to eight minutes of flight. Um, the charger actually takes about uh, 30 to 40 minutes to charge the battery. Average probably about 40 minutes to charge the battery. This helicopter flies with a lithium polymer battery, a 500 milliamp which is the capacity of the battery pack. We can compare that to gallons in our gas tank of our car, 500 milliamp battery pack, and it's a 3.7 volt lithium polymer pack. Do not ever charge the helicopter with any other charger other than what came with the helicopter, what comes with the helicopter. It's designed to be charged. Lithium polymer batteries have to be charged with a charger designed for that specific type of battery. A lithium polymer battery should never be charged unattended. I would recommend that you charge the helicopter on a non-flammable surface. There have been uh, rare cases of failure with chargers or something going wrong with the battery and the battery in, in that case can actually burst into flame. Don't let that scare you. I've got hundreds of flights on RC uh, helicopters and airplanes and lithium polymer ba batteries are very reliable as long as you do not abuse them, meaning ch that you, you need to charge them with the right charger, but still do not leave them unattended. And I would say that when you, when you plug the charger in, this little light that's on it, I think it's an LED, will be off when you plug the helicopter to the charger. When the light comes on, the helicopter is fully charged. Do not leave it on the charger too much longer than uh, necessary when the light comes on. Uh, you may damage your battery if you spend too much time charging it after it's reached its full charge. The helicopter is very durable. If you get in trouble with it, I suggest that you just pull your throttle back to min minimum and let it fall to the carpeted floor. And you will be doing that as you learn to fly it. If you're going to fly it outside, I would never fly it over anything but grass. Excuse me. What's that, Santa? Ah, uh, I'll, I'll try not to forget that. Okay. When we turn, we're going to turn our transmitter on first, 
and make sure our throttle sticks all the way down and turn our transmitter on first. When our transmitter comes on, our transmitter light will begin to blink. We want to turn our transmitter on first always. And then our helicopter, a little switch here, a little, has a little red switch on our helicopter. We'll turn that on after our transmitter's on. I'm going to go back here for a bit. Before I turn my transmitter on, I'm going to take my trim switch down here. I'm going to line up the arrow on the top of the trim switch with a little arrow that's imprinted on the transmitter case. That sets our trim in neutral. Remember, the trim is going to adjust our rotation by helicopter right or left when we come up into a hover. So I've got the trim switch set so the arrows lined up with the top arrow on the transmitter here. They're right close together. My slow fast switch is set so that the switch is out. It should be in the slow mode. I'm going to turn my transmitter on. You'll see the light blink. I'm going to turn my helicopter on and we should set it down on a flat surface. Okay, when you fly your helicopter, you want to make sure that you don't give it too much throttle stick. That's the stick on the left side. Bring the throttle up to about one-third of uh, the complete distance that you have. And let the helicopter hover. You'll notice that the helicopter wants to rise, and you might have to bring the stick back down a couple of clicks. It's turning to its left, so I'm going to rotate my trim knob to the right just a little bit so I have the helicopter quick turning, and it looks like we're trimmed pretty well. This is how you want to start to learn to fly. Just bring it up and let it hover. You want to keep it away from objects, so make sure everybody that's going to watch is out of the way because these blades can cause some damage. They could cut you. However, uh, I know that they'll definitely damage an eye if they happen to hit somebody in the eye. Now, you'll notice that the helicopter is at about 40% throttle right now in hovering, and it will want to. Uh, to either ascend or descend, so I have to give it a couple more clicks of, of throttle to get it to rise again. So it's always going to be wanting to rise or fall. If it gets within three feet of your ceiling, decrease your throttle a little bit. Now you'll notice that I'm actually using the right stick now, and I'm turning the helicopter with the right stick. Just practice hovering. To give it some right stick to turn it to the right. The left stick turns the helicopter to the left. It's climbing again. I want to decrease the throttle a little bit. Turn the helicopter to the right. I'm going to practice some, some slow flight, forward flight. So I take the right stick and I move it forward until the rear rotor blade just starts to turn. And I'm just giving a little bit of forward throttle now. I've got to control the left stick to make sure it hovers and doesn't get too close to the ceiling. I give it some forward flight. I'm going to practice some reverse. The helicopter backs up. Helicopter goes forward. A little bit more throttle now to get some altitude again. You want to keep it about three feet off the floor, about three feet away from the ceiling. And I think about 15 feet of maximum altitude outside is about right when you're flying outside. Now it's rotating to the left. I'm going to trim it up a little bit. There we go. We got it trimmed pretty well now. So a little bit of forward throttle. She'll move to. I want to back the helicopter up. I give it full reverse stick. That's full speed in reverse in the slow mode. And this is going to be full speed uh, in the forward mode for indoor flight right there. Now as you advance in your skill level, you might want to fly in that fast mode. That's full speed full forward speed in the fast mode. But for indoor, I, I like to even fly it in the slow mode because I can fly it a little more relaxed. I don't have to worry about uh, damaging anything in the house or damaging the helicopter, damaging any bystanders when I'm at a slower speed. It's a nice fine little helicopter and uh, it's a good way to get started in RC helicopter flight. Five minutes minimum for your battery to return to a normal temperature before you recharge. Just, just gradually decrease your throttle and let her touch down. Well, I hope this video has helped you. What? What's that, Sam? Okay. He just wants to make sure I haven't forgot anything. He's a busy guy this time of year, aren't we all? And we've just enjoyed a nice flight with our SIMA SO32G helicopter.